So following on from last week's episode, it's actually the same day and it's the same evening and it's about three minutes after I just said goodbye to you in the last episode. But what we're doing is um, putting this in the next episode because it would be make one episode too long. So um, we're actually now working on the port side lazarette. The parts have been cut um, and then we're just going to start welding those into place now. Come and have a look. Here we are. This is the section in the port side lazarette. And the pieces for it are on the bench here. Uh, Adam's around somewhere and we're going to get that welded in. Melissa's been at work all day um, and she's due to come here after work now. So in a short while she'll be here and um, she'll be able to see what we've done the last few days. Well, I just welded that bit in from the outside um, and of course nobody was filming me uh, but Paul's inside and now he's I've popped in the torch and he's uh, welding it from the inside as you may be able to hear Paul, I don't know who, Paul, Adam uh, Adam is a much better welder than I am because he's actually a welder and I'm not uh, but at least it means that um, he's doing the tricky bits and I'm doing the easy bits and anything that I do gets checked by somebody who's actually good at this. Sorted. That's now welded inside and out and again needs Cleaning up, lanishing back down, grinding down, and checking for pinholes. Shouldn't be any, to be fair, because it's full penetration, welded from both sides. Uh, just got this next panel to do. And then there's that bit. And a couple of little spots under there. We're cracking on with this, really. So, finished welding in this piece. Not welded along the bottom, because there's more welding, another strip to put on underneath there. Don't know if you can hear me. We're now just um, using the grinding discs to uh, uh, clean up the weld on the other side, identify any little problem areas. We haven't found any, it's all perfect at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, more of the same, lots of cutting and grinding and sticking metal together. Well, Jack and I have um, come back to the boat today to uh, carry on with work because I've got four days off in a row, which is nice. Uh, Melissa's at work flat out. So Jack and I are staying on the boat for a few days. Um, we've turned up today um, and oh, just been and bought some more discs and what have you, but it's uh, blowing 30 knots and hail, sleet and snow showers. So, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be doing anything today. Tomorrow's supposed to be looking better. This is the welding we did last week, which all looks great. I need to clean up, finish cleaning up these welds. We have welded from both sides, so we've got really good penetration through the steel anyway. But yeah, that's looking good. Happy with that. And how's the other one looking? Still got this piece here to do. That one's looking grand. Uh, yeah, I haven't welded along the bottom of that yet because we're going to carry that pan along down. Um, what I might do, uh, it while the weather's bad. We're gonna just watch Star Wars for a bit first, but what I might do while the weather's bad is work inside. There you go, it's actually snowing outside now. Yeah, see, it's not really the right weather to be cutting and grinding and working outdoors. It's actually really, really pretty <laughs> walking through this boatyard in the snow. We've decided to be men, haven't we, Jack? We've decided to man up and brave the elements. It's actually not too bad now, but as I said, every five minutes the weather changes. And we've heard a noise, which sounds like they're doing some work in the boatyard, so we've just come to investigate. And then we're gonna go down in the back bilge and clean up a load of the rust and dust that we created welding the other day. Let's see what they're doing over here. Sounds interesting. So this is the, the shot blasting that we're gonna get done on our boat. Let's come out of the way. 
wet blasting one of the boats over there and that's what we're going to have done this is the kit that they use look a great big compressor and then a huge vat of media there oh, oh is that our that's our lump hammer what's that doing there did you leave that there so um what we're going to do well, we've been as you know we've been welding at the back of that lazarette and what we're going to do today is uh, do a bit of a cleanup in here because bashing and hammering makes all sorts of flakes of paint and dust and rust fall down so we're going to have a clean up in here before we do any more cleaning and bashing and chopping and grinding <laughs> something really quickly um, so right here is where the wheel used to be right in front of the door so you couldn't really get out and the previous owner moved it back to here so um, we think we've moved it but well, they moved it back a little bit too far so we're gonna move it again maybe yeah we might move it forwards a little bit but um... Well, we might leave it where it is. Yeah. What are you actually doing there, Jack? Oh, there's a little, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I know. I'm trying to cut it off. Brilliant. Um, and I can't really, like, it just stopped. Oh, well, keep trying. You'll manage it. We can now get to all of this. Take out this bilge pump. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. 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 Yeah, and what's inside the junction box, Jack? Um, this... A black wire. Yes. And then it goes to a chocker block. That's called a chocker block. That? And it, no, this thing that you've got in your hand. Oh. OK, and then it goes to the white wire. And when you look at that wire, Jack, that is what we call coaxial cable. So it's got a core and a shield. And what that means is that that wire was going to an aerial. It was going to the VHF antenna for the marine radio. And that is an absolute joke to connect. You should never connect a VHF antenna using a chocker block. It's a complete joke because the shielding for the VHF is completely gone. It's just a, it's in every way, it's the wrong way to do it. And I'll, when we put it all back together, I'll show you the proper way to con connect coaxial cables to each other. And that is not it. I'm surprised if they got more than about two miles range off their radio <laughs> with it wired like that. That's dreadful. But now you know what a junction box is, a chocker block is, and what coaxial cable is. Cool. And well done for getting it off. Good job. And now we've got much better access to this um, this part of the boat from the inside and I can either put a bulkhead back here and put this back into a lazarette or we can turn it into a berth or we might even move the heads to this location. I have some standing headroom here to actually put a step down, put the heads here, uh, move, get rid of the head at the front which would make the forward cabin, the, the owner's cabin, absolutely massive, uh, much more storage for clothes which is important for a liverboard. Um, lots of considerations but it just makes this into a more usable and accessible space and it also means when we're climbing in and out through here working uh, that's not so dangerous it's not going to smack somebody in the head and hurt them. Right it's um, it's after six o'clock in the evening now believe it or not uh, and it's still blowing an absolute gale so I'm going to call it a day for today uh, and pick up tomorrow. See you tomorrow morning. Morning. 
So, what's it like today? I was hoping it was going to be a bit calmer, and it is a bit. It's not a brilliant day, though, is it? Still can't really do any welding today, I don't think, unless it calms down later. So, what I'm going to do today is start taking off all of the uh, the push pit because that's all got to come off. Uh, I might fabricate a new one. I might uh, make a custom one with davits and a bimini um, assembly uh, all kind of built into it or I might modify that one use the existing uprights and what have you and uh, and um, modify that one to, to suit but for now it's got to come off because we've got to do a lot of refabrication in the cockpit so let's get to work push bits off and that was a game and a half um, so uh, I had to take all the other stanchion rails off again as you'd expect because um, they're not stay lock fittings on those they're properly swaged fittings on the lifelines so yeah we now need to be super careful and not really let Jack go forwards unless he's um, got a harness on of some sort and center cleats off forgot about those so I've um, arranged the cockpit now so that I've got a tarp over the coach roof. The um, uh, push bit is gone and I'm now starting to disassemble more of this back end uh, so that I can chop out the rotten gas locker and eventually chop out all of these seats and weld in all new steel. So Melissa's arrived from work and we've just been having a big discussion about the cockpit and what we're going to do about it. The problem with the transom is... What's caused the issue? What, what's yeah. caused all of this issue? The transom box is only two inches, two and a half inches thick. So, and it's got no paint up the inside of it, from what I can see. So it's got the outer skin, which is four mil steel, and the inner skin, which I think is three mil steel, and the top, which is four mil or whatever, and no paint on the inside. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to make these seats out of steel in just boxes, and then we can cut lids in them when we decide, right, we want a lid here and a lid here and a lid here, etc., etc. depending on where Jack's, last, Jack's aft cabin is gonna be. The seats are gonna stay full length like this because they're long enough to lie on, which is great. We don't want to make them much narrower and if you look there's just a little bit of extra room at the end of where my feet are uh, so we're going to keep them six foot but we're going to make the transom box five inches or six inches deep instead of the two that it is so that we've got room to paint up inside it and then and this is the clever bit here we're going to cut a section out and put a nice board around it uh, so that we can paint inside and that will be a good place to keep a pocket to keep winch handles and keep warps or bilge pump handle things that you need in the cockpit and we can even do another one there and another one there and they're just handy places to put drinks and, and just pockets as a seat when needed yeah and it'll give us yeah because it because it'll be wide enough to comfortably sit on yeah but either way, we've resolved the issue with what we're going to do with this transom. And it now means that when I start cutting, cutting and hacking, I can cut and hack with a picture in my head of what we're doing. The first thing I'm going to do is Just repair. Just explain why we can't move the wheel forward. We can't move the wheel forward. So we can't move the wheel forward. Not much anyway. Not much, we, because the push rod, which uh, the actuator, which pushes and pulls the actual rudder, the geometry wouldn't be right if we moved the wheel forward. The only way we could do it would be to move the wheel all the way forward here because and reverse of, everything. Right, and because of the emergency tiller. And there you go. And this cover here, if you take that off, somebody's painted over it, but there is a square spline for an emergency tiller. And if we put the wheel here, how do you use your emergency tiller? You could do it backwards, I suppose, but that would be very confusing. Very confusing in an emergency when your steering's jammed. So we're going to leave the wheel exactly where it is. Uh, and we, we now know what we're doing. But as I was just about to say, the outer transom I'm going to repair first. 
because what I don't want to do is start chopping it all out and have the back end of the boat twist or distort. Okay. So, following on from yesterday, it's quite windy today. <coughs> and what I'm going to start by doing is chopping out this transom. Now, with the mast still up and the frameworks the way they are, I'm not going to cut out the whole transom with one piece. I don't think I need to because it seems a lot of it seems okay. But I think I'm going to cut out from about here across all of this rotten stuff uh, down to about here. But first of all, I'm going to clean up the steel to um, uh, to see, you know if I'm wrong and I need to cut out more. I'm going to pin up some tarpaulins to protect the other boats. We're right in the back corner of the yard and there's this steel boat next to us uh, and this old wooden thing. Um, and then there's these scrap boats over behind us. Uh, there is a, a polyester boat, a, a fiberglass boat here, but it's further away than it looks on the, on the GoPro. But that said, it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to pin up some tarps uh, to try and maintain the dust. So the footage of me grinding and cutting is not going to be that interesting because it's mostly just going to be me under a tarp. <laughs> I've uh, cleaned up around where I think I'm going to have to cut out to kind of mark out the section that I'm going to cut. And I'm going to cut from here. I'm not cutting further across because I don't want to disturb the strength around the uh, backstay. So I'm going to cut from here, straight down, all the way across. Oops, it's easy. Melissa thinks it's funny when I say oops a daisy. God, I don't think it's funny. Who else says oops a daisy? Anyway, so all the way across here. So again, it's the same as the rest of the boat. You've got this horrific area of rust here. Horrific. But an inch below it, no shiny steel. So I'm going to cut across there, cut across there, cut up there, take a piece out, and then use that as a template to go and cut a new piece. Um, and uh, yeah, working under the tarp makes things a lot more tricky, but it's, it is containing a lot of the dust and stuff, you see, so it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. There you go, I've uh, marked out with the marker pen the area that I'm gonna cut, and the next thing to do is radius the corners. There you go, radius the corners, both sides. Uh, and that is to stop, if you get a split or a tear in the steel, it's to stop it, stop it um, spreading. Uh, so I'm informed by all of the proper engineers in this world. I dread to think what I look like now, but I'm gonna have a break for a minute. First, I'm gonna show you what I've done. I've just pulled the tarp back so you can see. I need to wash my face, I think. That is now the transom. Uh, there's a little piece there I've got to cut out. I've done that bit, but it all came out in one piece. It's down there. Um, I've been protecting the other boats with tarpaulins and my body and whatever else. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the plan is I'm not going to take the inner side out, the inner bit out until I've welded the outer section back in because I don't want to cut away the whole transom and have the whole distort. So I'm going to cut a piece. Uh, to fit in here, weld it in, and then I can cut out the inner inner side. And as you can see, the problem was, this is so narrow, two inches or whatever it is, that they haven't painted the steel inside this cavity. So we're going to quite simply make it wider so that A, it acts as a seat for the helmsman, and B, we can get up inside it properly to paint it and treat it properly. Uh, but there you go, that was, the first thing I found on this boat that I thought that was a stupid thing to do when they built it. Everything else about the boat when they built it, I thought, wow, that was really clever and really well made, really well done. Well, I'm going to have to pop to the hospital 
because I um, uh, slipped with the grinder and it went through my trousers and that's going to need some stitches and through my glove and that's not bleeding much but it's through to the fatty tissue so I'm going to need a couple of stitches I'm afraid. Uh, I was wearing the protective gear and uh, it's a good job I was because it would be a lot worse if I wasn't but it went straight through my leather gloves. Um, it's one of those things, it's not the end of the world, it's only a cut. But hey, never mind. Uh, hello, as you, as you know, uh, Dad's cutting himself. Well, it's not bad, not quite badly, but just needs a bit of a stitching. He says it doesn't hurt, it stings a bit. But at least uh, he will have a new star cut to show everybody that he sees now. Okay, bye. It's only one on my thumb here. It stopped bleeding, but it's gone through into the fatty tissue and I think it might have gone into the tendon just a nick. So I just want to get it cleaned out with some sterile saline and open it up to have a look at the tendon, make sure that's good. And the one in my knee, that's definitely going to need some stitches. But they need cleaning out with sterile saline before stitching up. Otherwise, I would just glue them and, and crack, crack, crack on because I'm not in actually any pain. Um, but yeah, probably best get them looked at properly. Been, then? No, those trousers aren't going in the bin. They've only got look that that's um it cut through straight through my overalls and through my wrap trousers and it cut through my leather welding gloves that I was wearing at the time. Literally just what happened was I'd got the grinder in my hand, I'd finished cutting a piece of metal, I'd got the and um I was just whittling the piece of metal to break it off stupidly. I should have just turned the grinder off, but it's just, you know, you do these things. And uh, wiggling the piece of metal, and it just, as it came away, I just, just lost my balance. I wasn't in a, a precarious position or anything, really. I was just kneeling, you know, in a, in a fairly stable position. But I lost my balance, and the grinder just bounced off my thumb. And, and uh, which of course made me flinch and then it bounced off my knee. So it's like, it was like the rude Goldberg of grinder incidents. It was like thumb, knee, hospital. Oh well, there you go. Um, it's just, it's what you want to know, not, not a big deal. Well, I'm back from the hospital. Um, I've had uh, some uh, steri strips and on my knee and I've had some stitches in my wrist and an x-ray. Uh, the cut was really close to my radial artery which would have been nasty but yeah, it's all fine it's all fine a couple of stitches and um, uh, I'm not going to do anything else today because um, I'm full of codeine uh, Melissa came and fetched me and took me to the hospital and I'm just going to chill out watch some telly and <laughs> carry on tomorrow morning and I need to take it easy and not pop the stitches on that hand Right, after the drama of yesterday, I'm not going to hold play today. I'm just going to take it a little bit steadier than normal and I'm not going to try and achieve as much as I would have liked to have achieved. There it is, that's um, the piece I've cut out of the transom. And I will simply clean up around the edge of this weld, chamfer it. Well, I thought I was going to have to do lots of clean up to that, but I've just been over it with the, the grinder and a, and a thick grinding disc. And... Um, <laughs> It's actually, despite my injury yesterday, it was cut pretty much perfectly. Uh, so I've just chamfered the edge ready for welding and now I'm going to start making uh, measurements to cut a piece of fresh steel to go in there. kind of in um, I can tack that in a couple of places and then uh, pull it in in the required places of course plate steel like this when it's welded it it distorts and buckles all over the shop so uh, 
um, the original transom is slightly twisted in some odd directions but that's normal well that's it for today um, the uh, gas delivery didn't arrive unfortunately so not been able to do any welding today but the transom piece is cut it's all positioned ready to be welded in next time I'm here uh, and I'll bring I'll remember to bring some welding rods with me next time um, I didn't go and buy any because I haven't actually got the attachment for that welder to hold the rods anyway so Never mind, uh, but we've got quite a lot done the last few days and uh, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.